In today's video, we're going to be looking at installing Cockpit on your server. Hi everyone, my name is Robert Meisen and I make videos on Beep Beep stuff. If you haven't watched a previous video, I'm going to leave a link up the top here so you can go to that and watch the first video if you are following along for the Podman series. However, if you are just looking to install Cockpit on your server, then I definitely recommend sticking around as this tutorial will definitely help you install Cockpit and the extensions you can use with Cockpit on any server that you are using. Cockpit is a web UI service. It's not essential for running Podman or for managing your servers. However, it is a really nice way to graphically get an overview of what your server is doing, as well as manage some basic stuff like networking, Podman containers, and storage. So for that, it's quite useful. As mentioned in the previous video, I'm using OpenSUSE MicroOS for my servers. It's what I use for all enterprise and production servers. However, this tutorial and the guide that will follow will definitely work with basically all Linux distributions. Cockpit is available on basically all Linux platforms. I will link all of the instructions to uh, the various websites below in the description. Right, now that we've got the introduction out of the way, let's get over to the computer and start installing Cockpit. Okay, so now that we're at my computer, um, we're gonna install Cockpit and extensions for it that I recommend using. Now, I already have Cockpit running. I'm gonna do this in the terminal inside of Cockpit, but for you guys, you're gonna to connect to the terminal of the server, and then you can install Cockpit via that method. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install Cockpit itself. So we're gonna type in sudo transactional update pkg for package, in for install, and then type in Cockpit. Hit enter and it's going to install that. It's gonna ask you to restart the server if you're using a transactional uh, server updates. Um, once it's rebooted, I definitely recommend rebooting before installing any of the extensions because we wanna enable the cockpit service first. So go ahead, restart the server, and then when you're back, we can install the extensions. Now that you've rebooted the server, we're gonna to want to enable the cockpit service before we start adding any of the extensions. Now to do that, we need to type in sudo systemctl enable dash dash now cockpit dot socket. Uh, what that's going to do is going to enable the cockpit socket on the web service. Hit enter. Um, it should just move to the next line. Now that cockpit is running. Now, by default, Cockpit doesn't install a bunch of extensions. It comes pretty basic, uh, just a basic UI. Now, there are some extensions that are certainly really useful, so I'm gonna take you through how to install those now. Now, there is a lot of extensions on the Cockpit website, uh, the project website for Cockpit. It actually has a good list of uh, different extensions. The official ones developed by Cockpit uh, team themselves, plus you have some ones by Red Hat, and you also have some third party. Now, what you can do, uh, if we look at here, the storage one to manage your storage uh, inside the Cockpit UI, as you can see here, the package is called Cockpit-Storage-D. Uh, so we could copy that, all right? So instead of typing in uh, Cockpit to install that, we could type in sudo transactional update pkg install Cockpit-Storage-D. Hit enter, it's gonna pull that down. Once it's done the install, uh, restart the server. When you restart the server, that service will be started. As you can see here on the left, I have storage. So which ones you install is really up to you. There's a few things there that you definitely want to install if you're managing containers. One of those is obviously Podman. Uh, so on the website here, you can see here, there's the storage service. Definitely recommend this one. Managing your network, as you can see here, cockpit-network manager, also a really good one to install. Uh, virtual machines, if you want to do some virtual machines, that's another good one. A really important one for this uh, tutorial series is the Podman service. So to install that, you would type in the same command again. You would just type in uh, transactional update pkg install cockpit and then instead of storage D, you would type in Podman. And that would install the Podman service. I'm using uh, SE Linux, so you can install that as well. Um, I'm not using anything else on the official uh, packages. Um, I skip past Red Hat and then I go down to third party uh, and one of the other ones I install here because it's a transactional server, 
I use this uh, software updates. It's called Cockpit-TU Kit, which is Transactional Update Kit. And that allows me to do software updates via um, the UI, which is nice. So now that you've installed Cockpit and various services, you'll be able to connect to this via the IP address of the server and port 9090. So you could type in IP address in your terminal, find out which IP address you're using. So in this case, I'm using this one here. So you would type in that IP address uh, with a two dots and then 1990 for the port. That will get you to the front page, which looks like this. Uh, the front page gives you some basic information about your usage, system information, any configurations there. And if you've installed any of the extensions, like I've mentioned, you can see them here. I definitely recommend having a little look around. It's really interesting, but I can take you over a few of them really quickly for this video. Logs, obviously important as always. Storage, this is a nice way to mount. Uh, you can actually mount USB devices and other uh, remote devices such as NFS mounts and SMB mounts. Uh, you can see the different devices here. Um, you can create RAID groups and stuff uh, from any connected di uh, drives, which is really nice. Networking, uh, here you can manage uh, all of your network um, uh, controllers as well as add things like VLANs, bonds, bridges, you can do it via the UI and it's really nice because you can actually get an input of how much data is being sent and received by these uh, different uh, controllers. Podland containers which is the reason why we're here in the first place as mentioned in the previous video I showed this. Create containers here, download images here, create containers in pods here uh, and manage them here. Uh, you can see all the information about uh, these uh, containers in this UI. It's a really nice quick way to look at it. Not super detailed like uh, Rancher or Portainer, but definitely enough for a quick overview. Virtual machines, which I'm not doing right now, uh, but I do have this installed. But here you can create virtual machines and run them in OpenSUSE uh, micro OS with a cockpit here. Um, another one I definitely recommend installing is SE Linux. Uh, if you're interested in any kind of enterprise or production deployments, I definitely recommend this. And then software updates, this is really great because it's transactional server, of course, all the updates download. And every time I do an update, you can see here every single snapshot of every update and I can just roll back and reboot if it doesn't work. And I can check everything here via the interface. So as you can see, Cockpit, is a pretty good system for managing a server via UI rather than via terminal. It also has a terminal built in. Here you can also see applications that you have on the server as well. It will list all the applications that are running that you've installed extra. As you can see here, I've installed six different extra applications that are on the cockpit and more of these keep getting developed all the time. On the cockpit project website you can see here there's one for sensors there's one for cloudflare tunnels which is definitely on my list of things to try out uh, so there's a lot of uh, applications here some that red hat develop uh, as well as the official team so there's a lot of uh, support for the cockpit project and it's supported on almost every single version of linux uh, if you go to install and we scroll down you can see here uh, it's been tested and uh, uh, confirmed working on fedora red hat CoreOS, CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Clear Linux, Arch, Tumbleweed, and Enterprise uh, SUSE also. And with all the instructions necessary. Obviously for this video series, I'm doing this on OpenSUSE MicroOS. So I hope that that was helpful, that you get a quick overview. Like I said, definitely recommend just playing around with the UI, uh, just getting familiar with it. Uh, and from now on, I basically always use Cockpit to manage my servers this way. Well, I hope that the video was really useful for you. Please do like the video if you do like it and subscribe to me if you want to get more videos from me, especially if you are following along for the Podman series. In the next video, we're going to go downloading, installing images, setting up pods and containers for Podman, as well as get into the basics of networking for Podman. As always, I will see you in the next video.